Danica Kasterak, and I work in the Marriott Marquis uh, in the View Lounge. I'm a cocktail server. And you've been out here for how long? This is the 28th day of our strike. Yes, so almost a, almost a month. Trick or treat on Halloween? Trick or treat, it's uh, a little of both. A little of both. We're being very mischievous here, and we're doing our best to make a lot of noise. And keep... and what are the issues that uh, you face and other workers here face? Well, it's a changing world, and the world is really not really uh, supportive of the worker, of uh, the fact that we don't have uh, actual job security here, and we're trying to change that. By what does that mean, you don't have job security? If Marriott has been scaling down the amount of employees that it's had over the years. I've worked here for a long time, so I've seen it go from 1,000 employees to 600. And um, now that there's technology and there's uh, things that they can do that make it even easier to replace people, uh, there's there should be some language about how that's implemented and are you if, if it's if there's some way that we could come to the table to discuss the fact that jobs could just disappear or outlets could be sold and employees that spent half their life working like me could be just said uh, told they're, they're dismissed. Um, so and you don't have seniority. Uh, I absolutely have seniority. I'm number one in my department. I've been there 23 years as a server. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that uh, that we're not a family, that we don't care about everybody else, and that the people that came up from the bottom, even those people have been here many years because they really, really want to, they want to stay with something that's going to protect them. And survival for workers in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, housekeeper said, you know, commuting, and it's a very difficult situation, family, and and the cost and everything else, and then they want to cut the hours to three hours? Yeah, they're actually looking at a three-hour work day, and uh, that was actually a part of the contract language, which I don't see any way that anyone could survive on that in any place at, on Earth. And uh, a lot of people do commute from very far away. Most people don't live in the city. A lot of lives in the East Bay. A lot of these people also work two jobs because uh, their hours are shortened, and so they have to keep make up for it. They can't afford the rent here, so they have to live farther away. Commuting's hard. And have they tried to replace you with scabs or? Uh... Yes, they have replaced us with scabs as much as they can. Uh, I have seen some of them, and um, I don't think that they're professionals. I'm sure they have no idea what the layout is or anything. It's probably chaos in there because it's also under construction and uh, it's a very specific way that things work in that hotel and uh, with some strangers in there a lot of them from agencies we don't know where they are going to get used and abused and then dismissed when we go back in. Do you think it should be legal to bring in replacement workers when you're on strike? Uh, well I would say it's legal, but I would say it's not advisable and to be one of the people that goes across the picket line because you're actually making the future, if you want to be in the hospitality industry or any other industry, uh, you're lessening your abilities to, to have some say in your standards. You're just saying, I'll take a job because I'm desperate, and then you'll probably just get used. Yeah. And there are a lot of other hotel workers in San Francisco. Uh, who, uh, what kind of support are you getting from the hotels and the rest of the labor movement? Tons, tons. I've seen people every day. I take in cards and signing people, and I, the Park 55, the Hilton, um, the Four Seasons, all over the city. All the other hotel workers will come on their day off and strike with us for a while. Stagehands Union. We have teachers here today. We have Local Six. We have that's Electricians Union. I mean, a little bit of everything, and I had no idea that was such a great, great following for keeping the union strong everywhere. And a lot of workers think this is about them, not just you guys? Well... It's, a, it's about survival? It's about survival, yeah. And it's really, really evident that all of us are kind of struggling. I mean, we're in, we work for a very, very successful, powerful hotel. And we're still always with labor issues in there all the time. And if they could, they would definitely make us do things that was, are not reasonable. <laughs> and they uh, prevented unionization for a long time. Were you here when they were trying to organize this hotel? Yes, I was, actually. That's about when I got hired. And it took four years to make that happen. So my first four years were non-union. I never had two days off in a row. I would sometimes be scheduled for 14 days in a row. Uh, I basically had to work it extra shift if my relief didn't come and uh, I had no say in the matter and I was very unhappy here. When the union came in there was finally a set of rules. I was able to at least get two days off in a row. And they tried to prevent it. What did they do to prevent a union here at this hotel, the Marriott? Uh, I mean, I don't 
don't think they did anything too strong arm. I know that Marriott had a policy of saying you're already protected because you don't have to go union because we'll give you some health benefits and we'll give you a little higher wage. But in the end, it was also you have to bend over backwards and do everything we say. I moved furniture and did things like that instead of cocktailing. And uh, I would have to stock things and uh, everything was chaos until we finally had some organization here. So without a union, you have really no protection? Without a union? Uh, you're out the door any moment for no reason. They'll just kick you out and say goodbye and uh, there's nothing to it. So what can people do who want to support your struggle here? Uh, we do have a lot of people just coming to pick it for a few hours or you know even half an hour. Um, there is a uh, website and it's local2.com and there's also a tiny URL one, uh, one job fund and then I think there's another one uh, it's under a tiny URL. It's under the local too, um, guys. It shows how you can donate or you can not support, you not support the hotels that are picketing right now. I am the spirit of union. I am the spirit of activism. I am the spirit of the people. And we want to live in a society that is free from the fettering of the insanity that are the bonds that these fools are doing to us. They want to extrapolate us and make us their slaves. And that's done a long time ago. We are the union, local too. We will rise, we will rise again, again and again with the light of the living, for, for the workers' rights, for our freedom, for our freedom to be community, to do our work, each of our crafts, because it's about crafts and it's about what we bring from who we are as human beings, to how we serve, the hands and the hearts that serve, whether you're making beds, doing laundry, serving food, welcoming people. Where we are with Local 2 in San Francisco, on that note, is we are the hands and hearts that have been serving for many, many years. And these corporate employers want to extrapolate our souls, our spirits, our energy, our body, not take care of us, our health and welfare, not be able to give us living wages that we can afford to take care of ourselves and our children and our families. This hurts. It's, it's, it's devastating. I mean, how can we not take it personally when we give our lives to what our values and our beliefs are to be a part of a society, a society that proclaims freedom and dignity and human rights and education and welfare for the people when, we, when we're bleeding and we're sweating and giving ourselves away and winding up broken, you know, and I'm talking about the maids and the servers and the bartenders and the BBX operators, but it's, it's larger than that, we all know that. But we must at this time unify together and come home to ourselves and stand together collectively for that freedom, for our rights because that's very basic and it's very human. Is this global? Yes, global indeed. Company. It is It is a global company and it is a global situation. You know, but what we must realize is that we have the power, unified as the people, to make the changes and to create a transformation that is greater for this global situation. That it's not about something that's faceless and nameless, but to call to the Earth's resource. Because we're all knowing that that's what we need to do or this ship is gonna sink. Oh, we are um, on 
the strike because uh, of our contract. We try to get our um, contract signed. We are 24 or 25 days right now. So how are you surviving? 25 days. 25 days. Yeah. Time. How do you survive? Oh well, we're struggling right now. Yes, we are. But uh, yeah, we got to keep it on because um, the Marriott is not. It's not uh, doing a. Uh, uh, fair. It's not. I mean, what is they proposing is not fair. So Would they'd like to get rid of the union. Would they like to get rid of the union. I, I yes, I most definitely think so. And uh, they, I mean, what they're asking is really, really. Um, I mean, a fair with people that in here cannot survive, who lives here cannot survive, uh, for what they're offering, and also people that comes from. Uh, outside like uh, the East Bay or from a commute it takes a lot of money it costs a lot of money for the commute and everything so yeah what kind of work do you do I'm a waiter how long have you been a waiter here I've been here 27 years long time a very long time yeah and uh, also the other most important thing is the job security it's the job security uh, that uh, because they want to I mean they want they want to give us only three uh, hours a day, three three shifts, three hour shift a day. You want everybody temporary workers? Yes. How do you survive on three hours a day? I don't think uh, nobody can survive on three hours a day shift. So there is a lot of things. I mean, uh, fighting. That's why all our everybody's out because uh, we have. I mean, is there a lot of solidarity. And the, and the a lot, a lot, actually, more than unexpected. I mean, myself, but there is a lot every single day uh, since the beginning. Everybody's out, and we are here too. Until they do something, I mean, they, they sign the contract, which is fair, yeah. Could you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Peter. I'm a part of the San Francisco Taxi Workers Alliance. I'm out here to support the local two strike. Um, well, for several reasons. One, because we got a bunch of taxi cabs out here, uh, and I feel like somebody needs to represent and show that even, all, even though all these cabs are out here, there are a lot of taxi workers that are supporting uh, Local 2, and even some of these guys that are out here support the strike also. It's really hard for cab drivers right now. The picket captain here told me that he doesn't mind them picking up because he understands that it's a problem. Uh, that we're not making money either and that we all need to stick together so they want everybody temporary workers out i mean the struggle of the cab drivers in san francisco they want to destroy the industry isn't that the case say that again they want to destroy the cab industry they want to destroy the cab industry right now yes it's uh and we're organizing against that we're pretty busy ourselves at the moment the city uh is controlled by the uh uber and these big corporations is that who really running san francisco follow the money. I mean, <laughs> the World Health Organization the other day said that uh, pollution, air pollution is the new tobacco, you know, and, and we need to be fighting that. The, the San Francisco County Transportation Authority just finished a study. Uber is, is responsible for 50% of the congestion increase in San Francisco in the last six years. Congestion leads to pollution. This is a health problem. It's a workers' rights issue. We have 12 years left before it's too late to do anything about global warning. Either total ignorance or money are the only things that could be allowing this to happen. I want to let you know that as a local team member, I've been working this job for over 38 years all my life, and I suffer. You know, my body has pain that I live with every day. And, you know, I continue to get up again and again, but we need to have the provisions that create fairness on the workplace, safety on the jobs, and handling on a fair workload, because one job should be enough. Thank you, I'm in pain, and I love my job.